Hello there. Welcome back to my channel, Snips by Kelly. I'm Kelly, and tonight I'm completing a two-page layout. I have a two-page layout for you using our gorgeous Evergreen Collection. The Evergreen Collection is perfect for those winter events, um, even hiking and forests and outdoorsy, as well as Christmas. It could even be family photos that are late fall or early winter. It has some flourishes and leaves and and snowflakes and the I'm using the 12 by 12 sticker sheet as well as the pattern paper so the pattern paper and sticker sheet and the die cut so there's craft and French vanilla die cuts that have leaves and flourishes and snowflakes and because of the black accents I'm adding in some of our black die cut titles now I'm going to focus on our oldest granddaughter, Gracie's, Gracie May's senior photos. And I've done some of her summery looking ones, but you know how the seniors will have kind of like a couple sessions. And she did some late fall, early winter that had some snow in the background and the leaves were changing. And the acorn in this set, I think will be perfect. She has some black in there as well. She's also in band in college. She's on her first year of college so I love the musical note paper and then all of the pine and the acorns the acorns have a little bit of black the sticker sheet has this these wonderful black and white gingham crisscross stickers there's a little bit of black in the lantern sticker the black in the words so I wanted to go with black bases I think that will make a little bit more of those neutrals pop and her flannel shirt also has some black in it now my inspiration is from the Close to My Heart blog from I think a couple years ago. It's a Hawthorne layout and I've actually used this layout inspiration a couple times because I love it so much and this layout is for my simple scrappers. And so it's supposed to be very pattern oriented and very easy to put together for those that really like clean and simple layouts. And it simply uses paper strips that are dovetailed on both ends. And I love the um, matted back. I use that a lot and I have decided to use linen. So the coordinating card stocks are acorn black, French vanilla, mink, mocha, pine, sage, and shortbread. And I actually wanted to go with the light linen. I don't use linen enough and it is so crisp and clean and sharp. I absolutely love it. But I want to take just a couple moments here to go to the Close to My Heart blog and show you how you can find scrapbooking inspiration and how you can find free patterns. So you can muck through different sections of the blog. It's so wonderful. There are actual tutorials on different techniques and different things that you can do but there are tons of free patterns if you go over to our search bar and you type in sketches or free patterns, all of these different patterns will come up. You can be more specific. You can do scrapbooking layout patterns. You can do card making patterns. And there will be years and years worth of patterns that will come up. And they are so great to apply to a variety of different papers. It doesn't matter what paper collection was used on those patterns. Um, you can apply those to any pattern paper in your stash and I love to do that. So here is the pattern that I fell in love with that is my inspiration for tonight. And if you stay tuned at the end of the video, I'm keeping this layout super basic and simple, but I have a lot of elevation ideas at the end of this video. So starting with the three photos that I chose of Gracie in her flannel, I decided to have her facing inward on the left and then facing inward on the right for those three photos and to have her hooded photo as the full Local. And so I'm going to um, actually begin working with pattern paper strips. Now, because the photo that I'm using of Gracie on the focal page is a five by seven photo, and I have a five and an eighth by a seven and an eighth inch acorn frame that I'm going to put around it, and a five and a half by seven and a half black frame, the frame is going to be five and a half by seven and a half. So I've guesstimated on my strips. 
I like when I get a pattern or an inspiration that I'm following to sort of guesstimate on the strips. So I have actually nine strips here and they vary from um, eight, uh, excuse me, seven and three quarters is the smallest all the way up to nine inches. And then I'm going to dovetail both ends, but right now they're all 12 inches. So I begin showing the dovetailing process and then realize I need to trim them down. But I wanted to show you a couple things. There is a bendable way of the grain of our pattern papers. So if you bend in one way, it might seem a little more pliable than another way. So if it is on the grain of the paper, you can actually bend the paper and dovetail really easily right on the pattern paper without putting a bend in the center. But if you're going against the grain, it will actually put a crease mark or a bend in the center. So what I do if I can't bend it and cut it quickly because it's against the grain, then I will cut a half inch in the center and then cut down into the centers on the sides to create my dovetails. Many of you have seen this over and over, but oftentimes I will just keep patterns from one half to three quarters to one inch to one and a half inches to two inches to two and a half all the way up to three inches on regular white daisy paper. So if I'm in a big hurry or I have a project like this that takes has a lot of dovetailing, I will just lay those patterns over and snip, 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 snip. So I like all three ways, bending, folding, snipping, um, half inch in the center, snipping in on diagonals from the sides, or, um, um, or using cardstock patterns to do my dovetails. All three ways work great, but it's whatever is quickest and easiest for you. When I have a double dovetailed banner, I will fold them in half and use one end to create the exact same dovetail on the other end. So now I'm trimming down my strips. Some of the strips are three quarters, some of them are one inch, some of them are one and a half, some of them are two inches, and then some of them are two and a half inches. And then, like I said, the length goes anywhere from seven and three quarters to nine inches. So I'm showing you on my Versamat the actual sizes of each one. But if you think in general that the width is from three quarters, all the way to two and a half inches, and the length is from seven and three quarters all the way to nine inches, and it truly, truly doesn't matter. There's nine strips all together of varying widths and lengths within those parameters. And so basically what I do is I think about those widths and how they're going to stick out of the five and a half by seven and a half inch photo frame. So now we have nine strips in those measurements. And again, I'm just showing you that the length falls between seven and three quarters and nine inches. And I also want to use these black crisscross stickers. So I'm going to cut both of those black crisscross stickers out off the sticker sheet. And then I'm going to trim it to 11 and 3 quarters because my base of my layout is two black bases, 12 by 12. Then I have linen on the light side, which is 11 and 3 quarters by 11 and 3 quarters. And then I'm going to put these sticker strips at one half by 11 and three quarters across the bottom. And I love these black and white crisscross. I have heard most people, most of my paper crafters are in love with evergreen. They are over the moon over it and they absolutely love it for wintry, for outdoors, even for Christmas, for family photos, like I'm doing today, just some senior photos here of Gracie May. Um, but I've heard a few people, not too many, 
But I've heard a few people say that it's too neutral for them. But adding the pops of black, or it could be pops of pine, it could be pops of acorn, it could be pops of gold. When you add pops of other colors, it is totally going to make those neutrals stand out. And you're also going to be focusing on the colors within the photo. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make an anchor base. So I'm going to use the pine leaf dovetailed piece and I'm going to use that as the anchor and it's going to be two inches up from the bottom of the page. I've added foam tape to the uh, main photo but I've only taken the back off of the bottom strip because I want to be able to lift up the whole photo and often when I'm doing strips under a photo I will use this technique to be able to arrange my strips underneath without any problems at all. That will allow me to leave the um, leave that backing on the foam tape so that I can slide under, slide things in, slide things out. Now, another way to save paper on a layout like this is just to use the ends of the dovetailed pieces and then the middle that doesn't show can be used for something else. So you could use pieces that are only a couple inches wide, um, by a couple inches long and be able to get the same layout by just tucking them on the right and tucking them on the left. For this particular layout, I opted to just make it easy on myself and use whole strips, but you could totally um, save paper by using just partial strips. And I'm just doing some layering and I'm making sure if there's double patterns, if there's more than one strip of the same pattern, to sort of anchor those a little bit more toward the top and the bottom and then using that larger strip as the bottom anchor and then the dot, the dot acorn strip at the top, I'm having it come just um, kind of a titch underneath the actual top of the photo frame. And I love um, just the simplicity of this and how fast and easy a layout like this will go together. So the photos on the right are one and three quarters inch up and each photo has an eighth inch larger um, acorn frame and then a fourth inch larger larger black frame. I don't know if it's, if it's this head cold, but my tongue is getting twisted tonight. So forgive me. So the four and a fourth inch, um, the four inch photos, four by four photos on the right have four and an eighth by four and an eighth acorn and four and a half by four and a half black bases. And then of course the five by seven has a five and an eighth by a seven and an eighth a photo mat in acorn and a five and a fourth by seven and a fourth um, black photo frame. So now I'm using all of those leftover pieces or many of those leftover pieces from the left side to create some banners on the right. And a couple of them are too short, but I wanted the one mink bat banner to come all the way out to sort of be able to snuggle my title within that and you'll see when I start to do the title. And I've just made a hodgepodge of those leftovers so that I didn't have to cut any more strips. I only used the pieces that I snipped off of the left side. I wanted to use something out of our die cut titles and I love these die cut titles. We have them in craft and we have them in black and it's so awesome that we have extra title opportunities in such an economical sheet. Don't quote me but I think that they're $3.95. Um, I'll have to look that up but I'm like all of those titles and black, I'm sorry, but I will always love black as a go-to accent color. There is very rarely anything that black doesn't go with. And I love the idea of doing the best life or the sweet life um, and then backing life with a, a colored pattern paper. And then you have the insides of life that you'll be able to use for another title, um, either on a different theme, <clears throat> excuse me, 
or even um, I typically make 10 pages. So this is my Simply Scrap and Workshop and <clears throat> part of my Simply Scrap and Workshop and it's typically 10 pages. So in one of the other of the 10 pages, I might be able to use the insides. So now I know that I'm going to put the Sweet Life over on the right. I also want to pull in some more rounded pieces and maybe create a visual triangle on the lower left of the left page, the upper right of the right page, and then the lower right, um, excuse me, the lower left of the left page, the upper right of the left page, and then the lower right of the right page to kind of create a visual triangle across the page. So I want to look at a little bit more of a rounded sticker. And then our die cut sheets, the evergreen green die cuts have some white, um, flourishes some white leaves I guess they're more of a French vanilla color and so I can have some simple flourishes coming out of the circles and do a little bit of a play on that and then there is some little berries that I think would look good on the upper portion of the layout there and then maybe adding some kind of a little cluster there. There is a postage stamp that I think I could trim off as you know an added interest there and then maybe put another rounded sticker. We have a lot of rectangles so putting another round sticker to soften up some of the pieces there. There's a lot of little stars. There's some punch out stars with um, little star centers. There's craft stars there's French vanilla stars, there's some snowflakes. So there is a whole lot that we could do with this simple layout. And I am choosing not to do much with it at all in terms of the layout that I am creating as a master layout for my Simply Scrap and Workshop because my Simply Scrap and Guarantee is that I don't add thin cuts, I don't add stamping, I don't add Cricut cuts, I don't add all of those extras, I leave it for my Simple Scrappers to customize or leave as they please. My Simple Scrappers like clean basic layouts that are no fuss, no muss, that are easy to put together, and they also have the option then to elevate them. So at the end of the video, I'm gonna show you some techniques and some treatments um, on this very layout that you can add to elevate the layout if you so choose. So I like to give my Simple Scrappers the foundation and then if some of my Sparkle and Shine Scrappers would want to elevate the Simple, they can, but I actually use both styles. Sometimes I end up loving the Simple style better and sometimes I end up loving an elevated style better. It just depends. When I look at these photos of Gracie, I think they're gorgeous. I don't think you need to add much to photos like this that are so beautiful as is with these accent colors, accenting, accenting with the black and the acorn, the acorn that we're going to add to the life title is just beautiful. But we can do a lot to these. Um, we can do stenciling. We can do some things with some um, gel pen. We can do some things with a journaling pen. We can add some um, thin cut elements. We can add, I already said stenciling, I believe. There is so much that we can do to this if you want to add some extra wow and some extra pizzazz. But I think it's going to be gorgeous just focusing on these beautiful photos um, of Gracie. Now, I decided to trim off the little postage stamp die cut and add a little bit of the pattern paper to that to add a little pop of color, tear the edges of that, and then add a little sticker heart um, and the leaf flourish. Now, with the sticker heart, I've added just a scrap of the mink pattern paper that was left over, and then I added all of the life die cuts. I used a little bit of liquid adhesive and added those die cuts to another one of those leftover banners that we used um, that was left over from the strips that we used on the left page. And then they're so easy to trim out with your micro tip scissors and I use the non-stick non micro tip scissors 
to just kind of get the craw of my scissors underneath the edge and it's so easy to trim out. It's no problem at all. Now you're gonna see me fumble around here because I take the sticky back off of my letters and then I decide that I wanna move my letters and then I tear my pattern paper underneath and then I end up rearranging, but I look a little bit like I'm manhandling my titles and um, I know better, usually I kind of leave the film on my foam tape on the back of things then I decide where I want them and then I take the sticky off but I wasn't thinking and I got my letter spacing a little off and I didn't like it but I like the idea of that L resting just above the mink banner and kind of that little valley there there's a lot of little valleys and nooks and crannies that we can fill in with those and I also could do a lot more filling in there's so many die cuts in the die cut sheets and there's such a wonderful way um, to add extra bits and pieces to clusters and to embellish your pages and then you get two full sheets of those die cuts one full sheet of the um French vanilla and one full sheet of the craft. And I'm going to show you at the end of the video um, how you can actually turn those into coordinating color um, die cuts that you can turn those into sage or rosemary or pine or any color of die cuts that you might want those to be to accent your photos. These photos just went great with acorn and the pine, um, the sage, the black. I mean, these photos just absolutely were perfect, but it would be super easy to um, create different accents depending on what the um, the colors are. But I love how even the colors in Gracie's hair, like the highlights in her hair, she has a little bit of uh, the brunette, the darker brown that goes into almost in the sunlight. It looks like a little bit of splash of like red or auburn, even though she doesn't have a lot of that in her true color. The sun is just reflecting that and it just matches the pine cones perfectly. I really love this set. It's so versatile and th those people that I did hear them say that it was a little bit too muted for them I would be interested to see what they think after they watch this video or after they think about putting these colors with pops of an accent color that's deeper you know a darker accent color that draws out the colors in the photos it's amazing when you get the photos on the pages how the the page comes to life and how those more neutral colors are a perfect fit because you wouldn't want so many bold colors on top of bold colors in your photos. You would want to balance and I uh, never shy away from the more neutral tones in a layout. So let's take a look now. I'm happy with this as a simple scrapping workshop. I love it and I'm totally using it for my personal photos. But when I'm looking for elevation ideas, I go through the catalog. So the first one that I showed had journaling pen um, in dashed lines and you could do that down by the sticker. The one that I'm showing you here is some mink rubbing with a blending brush that you could do um, on the upper and lower levels around some of the clusters. This one has splattering with white gloss spray and it has some rubbing with some pine ink and it's using the ever evergreen scrapbooking stamp and thin cuts which I absolutely love it has this great these great trees it has the great this great church in it it's absolutely a beautiful beautiful set it has extra titles it has a little wreath that you can put on the church and I you I've taken a little bit of pine shimmer brush it was a little awkward there but you could add the pine shimmer brush to those die cuts. This one here uses some background stamping and some blending of some pine ink with a blending brush. But in our scrapbooking kit, we have pine embellishments. Now, in the die cuts that I've used tonight, they're only French vanilla and craft, but in the scrapbooking set, they're pine. And let's say you want to use pine, but you don't want to crack open a scrapbooking workshop kit, especially if you're a simple scrapper. You can simply take 
take a blending brush and any color you want, pine, rosemary, I believe I'm using rosemary, you can color the French vanilla die cuts any color you wish. You could color them acorn, you can color them toffee, you can color them with pine or rosemary, and it adds such a nice pop of color um, to add a third color to those die cuts or a fourth color. Then we have this beautiful stencil set that has three different stencils and a um, an embossing folder and it's the Christmas florals but on one of the embossing folders it's just leaves and I experimented with a little bit of acorn and toffee and a little bit of pine with just the leaf stencil and it's so beautiful I could see pine leaves around those clusters on the lower left and the upper right then we have another little bit of stamping in the background here and blending again with a blending brush so simple we also have some dashed lines with a white gel pen which would be great we could pull in this gorgeous church which i um, stamped in intense black on the church and then i took an a toffee ink pad and just streaked it down the front of that and it made it look like a washed log cabin and it would be so so pretty so many elevation ideas or if you're a simple scrapper it's already perfect no elevation techniques needed i hope you love this simple but beautiful layout and the elevation ideas hit like subscribe and shoot me a comment and i hope that you enjoyed tonight's process video and you are inspired. Happy scrapping. Thanks for watching.